Hi there, my name is Carl Irwin, uh, and this is a channel that is going to be devoted uh, to audio production on uh, Linux in particular. Now, that is to say that uh, many of the things that we'll be discussing uh, on here in the future uh, will be able to be applied to other uh, software environments, to other uh, operating systems, and other uh, proprietary uh, type environments. Uh, however, uh, this channel is going to be devoted to the musician who has decided either as a hobbyist, most likely, or as a professional, in very small cases maybe, to devote your productivity to the Linux environment. Now, the reason why uh, I've, I've started this uh, channel here is because I've been a hobbyist on other software uh platforms in Linux, mostly dealing with video uh, and uh, CG animation. Uh, I have a channel that has largely been devoted to Blender uh, and a little bit to, to GIMP, uh, some, some texture making, photo editing, things of that nature. Uh, and I have uh, begun doing some audio uh, tutorials using Linux software uh, to create music for film in particular. Uh, and I've decided to separate those videos out from that channel and give them their own home and their own place so that uh, we can maybe segregate these topics a little bit better for people who are interested uh, in a more focused uh, kind of channel. So um, I'm, I'm going to be building up this channel with that content and, and I'm going to end uh, production of that content on my other uh, channel. Uh, on YouTube. So that, that is really what this is all about. And hopefully some of you here have come over from that channel uh, to join me here where I will be devoting my time specifically to the music side of things. Now, um, when I say audio production on Linux, really what I'm talking about is music. But uh, much of what we're going to be learning may be able to be applied to uh, sound design as well, as it may relate to uh, making uh, videos or, or movies. Um, and uh, we'll be talking about that uh, some sometime in the distant future. Um, this first little tutorial here, we're going to talk about what you need to get started. Um, first of all, the question would be raised: Why would you do this? Why would you, you know, do this kind of production on Linux? Well, you wouldn't really choose to do that, not because there's anything on Linux that is better. Um, let's say, than what you would find on a Windows environment or certainly in a, in a Mac environment, as both of those operating system uh, environments have had quite a bit of development in proprietary software over the years uh, to create really industry standard kind of, um, uh, kind of applications that are used on major, major productions. Um, so that's not a reason why you would go to Linux. It wouldn't be to find anything better. The, the number one reason why people go to Linux really has to do with the, uh, the economic um, sustainability of it. Uh, it doesn't cost anything uh, to use open source software, stuff that has been released to the public and has an open license. Uh, and likewise, that software is often developed fairly regularly, and that's one benefit to using open source, is that there's constant development going on. The downfalls to using open source software are pretty obvious, and that is that you have limited development, and sometimes things can get really buggy, and they'll be stuck that way for a while. Um, sometimes projects will just end. The people who are working on those projects, which may only be one or two people, they may stop. Uh, stop working on it. It's it's a, a life's labor that they've had and uh, sort of as a side hobby and they just decide to stop doing it or they move on to something else and uh, suddenly you can find yourself having used a piece of software and it's not being developed anymore. Now on the other side of that more and more projects are becoming um, are becoming uh, commercially I should say uh, sort of commercially sponsored. Uh, they're sponsored by uh, an increasing network of donors and, uh, and uh, producers and developers. Uh, and it's these kinds of projects that you really want to navigate to because they have a, a greater sustainability. Um, I can point to Blender for uh, open source uh, modeling and CG uh, creation. Uh, that is a very robust company, uh, a group of developers there. Um, they have a conference annually, uh, which I believe is going on right about now. And, um, you know, there, there's, there's a very bright future for that software. And it, it's so bright that it's actually become, it, it's becoming used in um, mainstream 
production houses for major uh, feature productions. So, uh, you know, there is this type of, of open source software that has a very bright future and robust development, and uh, hopefully we can gravitate more towards those. Um, that being said, some of the things we're going to be using have, you know, their one man, one man, one woman show, uh, and they just happen to be the best that we have at the moment, and uh, we're going to use them anyway because you use what you got. Um, hopefully we'll have a lot of alternatives here that you can uh, get into uh, and uh, seek to learn about. I'm going to be sharing with you uh, in the environments that I've become comfortable with over a number of years of investigating this stuff. Uh, and I'll give you my reasons, uh, but hopefully much of what we will be talking about will not be focused specifically on software, but it will be focused on concepts that can be applied to a wide variety of software. Again, not even just in Linux, but in other places. Um, I also have noticed as I've looked online for support and for information on this topic, there's very little out there. So that's another reason why I wanted to develop this channel uh, so that we have, uh, at least from my end, I can provide what I know about uh, this, this sort of route. Uh, and be able to share that with other people so that there's some better, just some better support out there uh, for people who are interested in, in uh, uh, to jumping into open source and diving down that rabbit hole to see what they find down there. I, I will say this, I went open source probably 10, 15 years ago in that neighborhood and I haven't gone back. So uh, I believe that if you really do invest your time in investigating uh, what there is to be found on Linux, uh, these, these great a variety of options that are out there, you won't be disappointed uh, and you may never go back as I uh, don't intend to myself. I intend to stay here on Linux probably, well, until something's better, I guess. But uh, for right now, that just you just can't beat free and you can't beat the quality of this type of free software. So let's get into it. What are the things that you're going to need? Um, first of all, you're going to need an operating system. You need a distribution. So there are many distributions in Linux that are work that would work well, certainly for audio production. But I'm going to give you what I use, uh, and I'll explain why. Uh, so first of all, I use Ubuntu Studio. Um, I have used uh, Xubuntu or Zubuntu, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, Ubuntu with an X in the front. Uh, before, and Ubuntu Studio is sort of based on that. It has the same desktop environment, the XFCE environment. I've also used uh, Kubuntu and Lubuntu uh, before, which are other Ubuntu variants. I have not gone out of the Ubuntu family, but Ubuntu Studio has with it an integrated uh, real-time kernel that is perfect for audio and video production, specifically audio, and it deals well with uh, audio latency, which is a major issue when dealing with audio software. Uh, so I use Ubuntu Studio for that reason. It is, it is pre-packaged and uh, pre-configured to work well with many of the applications that we are going to be using. So I use Ubuntu Studio, and then on top of that, I use the KX Studio repositories. So KX Studio is a a live distribution for audio production, but it also has the repositories are available, uh, and you can download those and install that repository into your Ubuntu distribution, and then it will give you the updates that KX Studio provides for much of the software that we use uh, by default uh, natively inside of Ubuntu Studio. So uh, I install these repositories. You can find them here. Just install the uh, Debian. You'll have to check back every now and then on this because they do update it. And sometimes the legacy uh, installs of this repository will break down and you want to uh, purge those out and put the new ones in. So if you find that a piece of software isn't working or isn't updating right, you'll want to check into that. But uh, so far, Ubuntu Studio, Cake Studio repositories. Uh, again, I do this because these are time-tested uh, distributions that just work very well right out of the box, um, and uh, they've been they've been developed for many years uh, and work well with the software that we're going to be discussing. So there's no sense in just doing something different to be different. Uh, these are the kind of the standard. Uh, uh, distributions that uh, people use when using audio on Linux, and I highly recommend them. I found that they are very reliable. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is some, some sort of uh, a digital audio workstation. Uh, there are a number of uh, DAWs that are out there that are open source or free uh, that are native to Linux. 
I want to talk about a few of them very quickly, uh, but I've settled on one, and I'll explain which one that is in a moment, but I want to make sure that you're aware of all the options. The first one is uh, Traction 7 T7. Uh, it is an open-sourced variant of their uh, flagship distrib uh, uh, um, their flagship digital audio workstation, and uh, this is open source, open source and free, uh, T7. It is a little complicated. It has a slightly different visual interface to it than most digital audio workstations. I don't recommend it. Um, the reason why I don't recommend it is because it's fairly new to the scene. It probably is going to need to be um, revised quite a bit going forward and because it is from a proprietary company there probably won't be a lot of development on this. Um, they will focus their uh, attention to their main flagship uh, distributions, uh, their their main software. So um, you know check this out if you want. It is a you know supported software from a company uh, it is open source, has an open license, it is free. Um, because it's not originally native and because it's fairly new to the scene, I did find that uh, when I played around with it, it had a lot of uh, limitations in terms of uh, plug-in uh, uh, usability uh, and rewiring. So that's a, a big issue, I think, for what we're going to be needing to do uh, with our DAW. So, Keep that in mind. But anyway, T7, check it out. Uh, that's that's one that is kind of up and coming, but fairly fresh in the scene. Another one is Reaper. Reaper is a long-standing uh, application for uh, Windows and Mac, uh, but there is an experimental build for Linux. Now, Reaper is not free. Reaper is has a free-to-use uh, 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 trial period, and then it will give you a nag screen until you pay, I think it's $60, $70, whatever, for the uh, for the application. And that's actually quite cheap. Um, like T7, I do not recommend Reaper for the same exact reasons. Uh, this is a fairly new development on uh, Linux. Uh, using it in Wine is really substandard for what we want to have. We want things to be native. Uh, it has limited access to plugins uh, and rewiring. And uh, for those reasons, I would not recommend Reaper if you are very serious about using Linux as your main operating system. Uh, I would recommend something different than that. The next one is Ardor. This one gets a lot of praise. Uh, it is a very mature looking uh, uh, piece of software. It is uh, has been under development for a number of years. It has a small development team. Um, it is cross-platform. Um, I do not recommend Ardor, uh, and the reason for that has to do with its limited abilities in MIDI. Um, Ardor began as an audio sequencer. It was a digital audio workstation for audio, for recording and cutting and editing audio clips uh, and sequencing via audio tracks. However, it has great deals of limitations with MIDI. Uh, very basic functions like uh, MIDI uh, on-off events uh, do not work very reliably in Ardor, and uh, for those reasons I can't really recommend it. Hopefully that will change in the, in the near future uh, as updates become available and that the MIDI system gets uh, updated. Uh, but as of right now, for what we're going to need to do, Ardor has uh, some serious misgivings to it on the MIDI side. Otherwise, very good promising future for Ardor. Hopefully that this uh, development base will grow, uh, improvements will be made, and uh, in the future this will be something we can seriously invest Investigate. The next one is Rose Garden. This is the SourceForge page for Rose Garden. Rose Garden uh, is a very good uh, uh, MIDI sequencer. Uh, it mostly deals with MIDI. It has some notation capability. There's a notation editor assigned to it. Uh, it is a little complicated. It has, uh, you know, leaves something to be desired visually in the graphic user interface. Uh, but if you're dealing specifically and exclusively in MIDI, uh, Rose Garden might be something that you want to investigate. I think there is a better option than this. Uh, Rose Garden does not have uh, a great deal of development uh, going on. 
Uh, it's very sporadic from time to time. It doesn't get updated nearly as frequently as some of the others that we've talked about. Um, but it is one that you may want to check out. It's got very good reviews, certainly here on SourceForge. Um, and there is a, a niche of people that uh, use Rose Garden on Linux. The next one I want to talk about is LMMS. LMMS is very, very popular um, software because it is cross-platform. This began as a, a native Linux uh, distrib uh, uh, piece of software, uh, digital audio workstation that deals in MIDI. Uh, it does deal with wave samples, however, it does not do audio recording yet. That is something that they've been talking about in development for LMMS. Uh, LMMS originally stood for Linux Multimedia Sequencer. It has never really been a multimedia anything. It's just an audio program, uh, and because of that, I believe they've dumped that original title. They just call it LMMS. It's kind of like Fruity Loops is now FL Studio, and the old the old title is gone. So um, this is actually very much kind of like a clone of FL Studio, very similar to that. This is a very, very powerful program with some uh, very great, robust um, internal uh, instruments, uh, a number of different uh, synthesizers, and also some sample uh, playback capability. It also has the ability to play uh, some Windows VSTs using a Wine compatibility layer, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, the hang-up for me on LMMS, besides the audio recording capability, is that the interface is a little strange compared to other digital audio workstations. The automation tracks are separated from the MIDI tracks, and it's hard to line things up. Very difficult to do that. Uh, also, it's it's pretty much all in one box. It's not a lot of rewiring capability that you have with LMMS, and it cannot um, sync to picture. So I cannot uh, play back video in sync with my playback on LMMS, which is a deal breaker for me as I do a lot of uh, film kinds of projects where I'm syncing uh, sound to images. Uh, but anyway, LMMS, I would highly recommend that you download this and that you use it on occasion for a number of types of projects. But as a regular digital audio workstation, it really isn't quite up to the task. Otherwise, I would put this at the highest on the list so far of the ones that I've talked about. So definitely you want to have uh, LMMS. I highly recommend for all of these things that you uh, download either the app images or the binary versions of the, of the uh, applications. You'll find that Ubuntu Studio and KX Studio repositories have uh, updated installations of these programs, particularly for Ardour. Ardour is developed um, and then uh, pre-compiled by KX Studio uh, so that it doesn't have the uh, the, the the freemium uh, layer of payment. Uh, you, you can pay a little bit of money and get uh, our door completely unlocked. If you uh, um, install the KX Studios, you can download their version of our door for free without that limitation. So uh, it's been pre-compiled by them. Otherwise, you have to compile it from source uh, if you want to get rid of the uh, nagging features that trouble you in there. Um, but in spite of that development, uh, I highly recommend that you use app images and binaries because those seem to be the most stable, the portable install. So even if you have it installed under these repositories, you should download the app image and use the app image of LMMS. Next one is the one that I do use, and this is the one that I recommend as of right now. Now the problem with QTractor is that it has very limited development. Um, this is really just one person uh, for the most part that is working on it. Um, with a little bit of help, and uh, it gets regular updates as of right now, but you never know when someone is going to stop uh, stop working on a project. So um, for now, this has had a pretty good uh, presence in development for the last number of years, uh, but I don't know where that will go going to the future. But as of right now, this is probably the most versatile uh, Linux native digital audio workstation that you can get. Um, it has a very clean uh, visual interface. It does audio, non-destructive audio editing. It does very reliable MIDI entry and playback. It has um, uh, really perfect uh, rewire ability through the Jack audio server, which is uh, installed by default on Ubuntu Studio. 
and uh, you're able to do really just about anything with this this uh, program that you can do with a proprietary digital audio workstation. Also has plug-in capabilities, uh, and it also has the ability through Rewire to use an outboard um, plug-in environment uh, to uh, use instruments and uh, audio uh, filtering plugins. So. Q Tractor, this is the one we're going to focus on. This is the one that I have settled on. Very, very powerful program. Again, kind of sketchy, scary with the limited development that's going on, uh, but you can download a, a, a app image for this uh, and uh, use that app image. It is probably more stable than the uh, Ubuntu Studio or the KX Studio repositories. Uh, repository installs. So Q Tractor. Um, the next one, next thing we want to talk about is a plugin environment. So for digital audio workstation, I'm settling on Q Tractor uh, given all of these other options. There are other options that are not free. Uh, certainly Reaper is not really free. Um, I'm focusing on truly open source free options though. Uh, certainly there you could download some other uh, Linux native application that costs some money if you would like to do that. Uh, but these are the free open source uh, options that we are interested in on this channel. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about again is the plugin environment. So a place where you would uh, outboard your um, instruments or your audio plugins from your digital audio workstation if you're not going to be using them inside. Now the reasons why you would do this is that um, rewiring to a plugin environment means that your digital audio workstation has less to process. It can worry just about uh, audio data and MIDI data without having to uh, run incompatibility other plugins uh, and thereby reducing the possibility of crashes. So in order to do that there's a couple of options you may want to look at. The really, really the only one I want to focus on is this one, Carla. Carla is a KX Studio uh, application. It is developed by them. You can download the binary uh, from down here uh, and you can use those uh, uh, use that binary is more stable than the KX Studio build. Uh, so I highly recommend that you use the uh, binary, precompiled binary for that. So 64-bit uh, is most likely what you will do uh, for your Linux distribution. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about, oh, there's some other options I'll, I'll mention very quickly. Uh, Linux Sampler is another option that does SFZ, SF2, and Giga uh, files. Um, I find that Carla is a little bit uh, more reliable on those and has less hiccuping. It's, it has a less con convoluted code, I guess you would say. It's just a simpler uh, kind of design and seems to function much, much better. Likewise, you can also rewire through um, uh, LMMS and use LMMS as an instrument environment as well, uh, something that we will investigate uh, in the future. Uh, next thing, Wine. If you're on Linux and you're doing audio uh, design, you want to make sure that you have the latest version of Wine. Wine is a Windows compatibility layer. This is not something you want to depend on uh, with any great significance. However, there are some Windows VSTs and VSTIs that do function well inside of uh, Wine, Windows compatibility layer, and can be used in Carla and LMMS uh, if you have Wine installed. So highly recommend that you have an updated version of Wine uh, so that you can use some of those features, features that we will discuss in future uh, tutorials. You will also need to have an audio editor. And if you are on Linux, there is no better audio editor than Audacity. Uh, truthfully, Audacity is a great cross-platform audio editor. You can do some very complex things in Audacity, in spite of the fact that it is a destructive editor. You can do multi-track mixing, uh, unlimited uh, number of tracks uh, with effects, and uh, you really could mix an entire uh, audio uh, audio album if you wanted to from Audacity alone. You can use Audacity as your digital audio workstation. Um, it is not a MIDI application, it is only audio and it is destructive. So whatever you do, whatever changes you make, you're stuck with those changes uh, as you make them, uh, as opposed to other digital audio workstations which are typically uh, non-linear and non-destructive, or linear non-destructive. Uh, but anyway, we want this because it is a great way to uh, edit samples uh, and to master uh, final mixes uh, and do a number of kind of big sledgehammer type things that you would need to do with uh, pieces of audio. Uh, so Audacity, very, very important to your setup. 
Um, you may want to have a notation program if you are a cla classically trained musician. Just to be clear, uh, music is not notation. Music is sound. Music is, some, is the organization of sound and silence. Um, notation is really has to do with the literacy in music, the, the ability to read and write it. Uh, you may be a, a developing musician, but you may be an illiterate one, and this may not be something that is interesting to you. However, if you have some music, uh, music literacy and you are... Uh, uh, you prefer to write notation, and that's what you need. MuseScore is the best of the best as far as open source options. It is native to Linux, um, and it rivals the proprietary uh, notation software packages that are out there. It is uh, updated regularly. Very, very powerful piece of software. I use MuseScore all the time. Um, I am a musician. I'm a music teacher. Uh, I did my graduate study in music composition. I've written uh, four uh, film projects, small film projects in the past, uh, and for concert works, and I have used MuseScore for a very long time, about 15 years. So uh, MuseScore is what I would recommend. It's really the only option for Linux uh, for notation. Uh, the last thing you're going to want, uh, if you're dealing with music, you're probably at times going to need to put your music to picture for various projects, uh, either to mock it up to picture for somebody else for final for final editing or for your own project. So you're probably going to want to have a video editor of some kind. So I can recommend two video editors. One is Blender. Now, Blender is a modeling application and CG application, but it also has a video sequence editor, and I find that I use that as my uh, normal regular go-to video editor. I edit videos in there. You can do as many tracks as you want. It does audio and video with basic audio uh, fading functions and, of course, a wide variety of video editing uh, functions as it is a very, very complex, uh, robust piece of software. In addition to that, I can also recommend KDEN Live. This is a uh, increasingly developed video editor that is native to Linux, a very powerful video editor with lots of interesting uh, 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 effects that can be applied to video, but it also deals with audio as well. So I would recommend that as well. Another uh, honorable mention might be OpenShot. OpenShot is getting some somewhat active development as well. Um, I believe Kaden Live, for a number of reasons, has exceeded OpenShot just in terms of reliability and speed uh, from what I have experienced with it. So um, that's it. That's, you know, that's, that's, these are my recommendations. Uh, what, what do you need on Linux to do audio? Uh, you know, audio creation. This is this is what I have to offer to you. So, just very quickly, the rundown of the salient points: Ubuntu Studio for your distribution, the KX Studio repositories. You want to get those installed. LMMS as a MIDI sequencer uh, and also as a, an instrument uh, platform. Uh, Q Tractor as your digital audio workstation, MIDI sequencer and audio editor, uh, which is non-destructive. Um, Carla Patch Bay uh, for um, the Outboard instrumentation uh, and rewire, uh, wine compatibility layer, audacity for your audio editing, uh, muse score for notation, and then uh, for video editors uh, later on if you have projects that require video syncing, uh, Blender, Kden Live. So uh, that's it. Hopefully you found this uh, insightful, and I can't wait to explore these various options with you in the future as we really start at the ground level and start building up a, uh, a Linux-based uh, home studio kind of environment for the uh, creation of, of music and other various audio projects. So good luck with this, and happy mixing.